right. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Monsef Afrer, and uh, thank you so much for joining us in this new call of Your Divine Uniqueness. So thank you for your presence, for sharing with us this time and space. And uh, also very happy that Cathy Saturn is, uh, uh, is with us uh, for the first time uh, on the show. And um, yeah, re really excited um, that, that she's here with us and also about what uh, we will be discussing and what she will be sharing because it's, uh, how to say, like, especially like the, 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 the past few years, we've been like as empath picking up a lot of energies from, from the collective. And it's been really affecting the way we live our life, the way we create and uh, also our belief system about whether things will change or, or not for us or if we are deserving maybe living more a joyful happy and abundant life and it's it feels like at some point there are some conflicts there is part of us that um feels maybe this sovereignty and this true power that's that we have as divine being but at the same time with the very strong and intense uh collective energies um yeah it, it, it can be very challenging and so yeah, uh, how this is related to today's call because the subject is um, is how we can break free from the collective wounding and why we we may be feeling afraid of being happy and like I said, like living um, a joyful and fulfilled life. And um, yeah, it's it's really big subject and uh, um, there are like many how to say things that that we that can affect us, whether traumas. Um, uh, things that we inherited through our um, from ancestors and lineage and also collective so yeah that will be very very powerful call so um so yeah and after that we'll have also a q a where you can ask Katie your questions and uh, for that uh, you can raise your hand on zoom by pressing reactions then raise hand and um, if you are on the phone you can raise your hand by pressing star nine and also you can type your questions on zoom and uh, youtube uh, chat boxes and for those of you who are new to Cathy, she is a best-selling author, intuitive channel, vibrational healer, energy medicine teacher, founder of Zen Within Academy and the New Earth Now School. And uh, yeah, so with that, Cathy, welcome back. To, uh, welcome to the show. Very happy to have you with us today. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. I appreciate it. Yeah. So um, yeah, in the beginning, I, I would love if you can tell us a little bit about yourself and. Uh, and also the, the healing work you are offering. Sure. Yeah. Um, so my path uh, was a winding one to get into healing work, although um, I guess on some level, it's always been something that I've been interested in. When I was a child, I grew up in the mountains of Western North Carolina and was exposed to a lot of alternative health type therapies when I was a kid. And somehow, though, kept saying, nope, I'm going to go work for a technology company. I want to be CEO of a technology company. <laughs> so I had kind of this straight line vision, went to college with that in mind, got into corporate America and got really um, uh, unwell. Uh, let's just say I uh, had developed a lot of different chronic illnesses in response to the stress that I experienced at my job. And I was really good at everything that I did. I moved up really quickly, but the stress just kind of kept getting more and more intense. And about mm, three or four years into that, I got back into my meditation, back into my yoga and went on a trip to Boulder, um, Colorado and ended up at a psychic Institute for free healing. And that just changed my life. Um, it shifted me to such a degree and there were so many light bulb moments in that free 15 minute healing that I said, okay, I need to do this for myself. And that's how I got started and stayed in the corporate space for another, um, five or six years while I studied and just kept studying and kept learning and kept doing inner work. And then in 2017, moved into openings in within Academy, um, a couple of weeks after I hired a business coach, I got laid off from my corporate job and the universe said, all right, I'm kicking you out. <laughs> <laughs> kicking you out of this corporate zone and putting you into the healing work. And that's what I've been doing ever since. And when the pandemic activated, I um, had already been doing online healing circles and online classes and online sessions. And my guides had kind of told me about eight months before that happened to get everything online. And then it just kind of blew up after that. And now I see about 20 clients a week um, on a, on a good week. <laughs> and when I'm not traveling or leading retreats and doing workshops 
And um, my work is about connecting people with their divine unity consciousness, their true self, their authentic expression, empowering them. Um, when I work with someone, I go into their energy field and I can see all of the different aspects of them, past life, present lifetime aspects, inner child, ancestral pieces. And I see those energies and I kind of go in and I'm like a detective and I ask questions and we get to the heart of the repeating patterns in their life and we do clearing on that. And then we bring in new energy. And so that's the simplest way I can explain what I do. No session is ever the same. Even if I've seen somebody for a while, you know, every few months, it's it's always something new coming in. And I also do a lot of work with collective energies and reading the collective energies and supporting people in that through the programs that I offer in my two schools that I that I host. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. for sharing about this and uh and yeah for for sharing your gifts and supporting others um yeah so so regarding the the subject um maybe the the, the first question that's come up, that comes up is what what is the cause or the root cause of this um resistance that we may be feeling about um maybe living a happy life and uh, and and fulfilled uh life yeah, well, I think the first most obvious thing that I want to validate is that being a human is really hard. <laughs> you know, the way that we have chosen to be a part of this kind of grand experiment of humanity, that's what I like to call it to kind of keep it a little bit more neutral, is um, it's steeped in duality, it's steeped in paradox, it's steeped in things that are so hard. And so I think naturally we're navigating that and, and oftentimes we are conditioned in that society, in our society, to look outside of ourselves to find that happiness and that contentment. And whether you are on the spiritual path or not, I think there's a common thread there of looking to something external to make us happy. In the spiritual lens, it can be, well, if I can just heal this thing, then I'll be happy. Or if I can just heal myself enough to find a partner, then I'll be happy. There's always that kind of dangling carrot that exists outside of us that is there that we're trying to reach. And I think for me personally, when I witness people in their states of unhappiness, they're in these kind of repeating loops and patterns. And sometimes they can be ancestral patterns that they're stuck in or past life patterns or, you know, inner child trauma patterns. And when they're in these loops, there's kind of this self-repeating cycle of um, something, they're working on it. And instead of working on it through love and through compassion for themselves and validation of self, they're working on it often through this lens of shame or guilt or unworthiness. And so I think we have to change the lens through which we're healing and the lens through which we're navigating our spiritual path to really expand our ability to be present in the moment, no matter what is happening in our life, no matter what it is that we're healing, whatever's happening in our body, in our life experience, can we claim that happiness and, and hold on to it? Not so tightly that we snuff it out, but in a way where we, we hold on to it and we hold it sacred and we cultivate that and we cultivate the little joys throughout the day that add up to the bigger joys that we can experience experience from time to time yeah um i really love that and what, what you said is is really important like it's it's about the way we approach um those challenges those emotions and and that that we have because uh, like you mentioned many times we we judge the way we feel and maybe the way we behave and then we try how to say we try to change it from that uh from that uh energy or state of being and then it, it just how should I say? It makes us stay in that challenging experience like a much longer time. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I really love that. It's it's very powerful one. And so the question is, how can we shift that? Because like with with we, we created um, how should I say maybe a pattern or or a momentum where we judge ourselves or we feel bad about what we are um feeling or, or doing how can we shift that to more compassionate approach and loving approach yeah when i work with people on healing anything you know maybe I, I mean i work with people that have some of the deepest trauma you can imagine and then i work with people that are you know every every trauma it's not a hierarchy but it it's it's hard for the individual and when i work with them the first thing that i always start with in any process is validation 
And and because what I witness, even you know, when we're doing shadow work, let's say there's a part of us that we are less than thrilled about, right? Maybe our anger comes up, or maybe, you know, we do things that we're not proud of. When we're trying to shift that behavior, integrate that that darkness, so to speak, right? Bringing that back in and loving it. The first step, and this is the one that I see most people miss, is actually validating that that part exists, probably to protect us from something that's happened or some experience that we've had. Or it's in it's in existence because of what we experience in the world, right? It's So the first step in my mind is always this ability to validate whatever is. Once we validate it, the power that it has over us or that we're giving uh, giving over to can shift. And when we validate something, it's kind of like creating a field of compassion and acceptance, almost as if we can bring our arms around it and bring it into our heart space and hold it as sacred as we would hold the parts of ourselves that we love, that we want everybody to experience. And when we can get to that level of compassion for ourselves, then a lot of times the things that are creating a lack of joy for us can be situational or relational in nature, right? Our relationships can really impact our contentment when we're better at holding that stage of sacred compassion and unconditional love for our own parts that we are not happy with, it gives us more capacity to be able to then do that in our relationships where the other person is also working on the same thing. And when we have a greater capacity to allow people to be as they are without that place of judgment, while still honoring what our needs are and being in our sacred boundary, we create this ability for deeper connection in our relationships. And I think it's the deeper connection that cultivates so much of the joy and contentment for us on this planet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, like you said, like relationships become more like, um, how do we say, like sharing our experience in experiences together instead of um, maybe feeling something that is missing out that is missing or we feel empty in in um, in some aspects of our lives, and and those relationships they tend to that are uh, this way that we that we use to feel an emptiness that we feel um, how to say it? also maybe they they are also teachers like they remind us of uh, the way we need to to approach this. And remind us of um, that we can be whole and complete on on our own, and then we can share that uh, with the, with others. Yeah, yeah. Relationships are our greatest teacher, and I think especially in the last four years, we've gotten away from deep connection. You know, I don't know if we've ever really understood, at least in modern society, what deep connection really means. And and one thing that I have been really personally cultivating to expand my joy is being in deeper connection with the people that that matter to me. And the only way that I can get to that place of depth with them is to be in my full authentic expression. When I vibrate in my full authentic expression, whether I'm having a terribly emotional day as an empath, or I'm having a day where I'm just in my inner child joy, all of those parts of me are valid. And when I create that, that frequency of compassion for all those parts, I'm less ashamed of them out in the world and I can own that. And it's that authentic expression and that vulnerability that allows me to go deep with people. And I think one of the pains of being an empath sometimes is that we crave that depth of connection. We crave that depth of, of love. And, and, and oftentimes when we walk out into the world, one of the things that we see is that people are really shut down. Right. They're so disconnected from their emotions and we're feeling them for them because they're not connected into them. And we feel that. And part of us, if we're in a wounded state, says, oh, I'm supposed to process that for them. Right. And then we actually block connection and we we interrupt their their process. And so I think as empaths and sensitives and, you know, spiritual light workers, whatever title you want to give us. Part of our expression here and our purpose is to be our authentic selves and let people see what it looks like to feel, to feel deeply and and show them, you know, the way in that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And uh, so, yeah, and this is related to, to the, the collective wounding and uh, especially that it's been years and years now things are are happening in the world, like very challenging ones. And that really affects us um, personally because we are all connected, we are one, and we feel sometimes, like you mentioned, the, the pain and the, the suffering of others. Um, 
and then that's that also can be um how to say um a reason why we don't feel maybe worthy of not worthy like maybe it, it's not the good time to have a happy life we need to to be uh, at the same level of frequency as others and that's why maybe we understand that this is how we can support others so um so the my question is how can we approach like those energies that we pick up from from the collective wounding yeah yeah i i want to speak to that especially because i think in the last three weeks what i've noticed is that um the collective intensity has just exploded um, I have a lot of people that I work with that are very sensitive and tuned in and everybody keeps going, what's happening? Why do I feel so like I'm in an electric socket? <laughs> and it's it's this this feeling of of change and disruption that is just going to continue happening and expanding in our collective because a lot of our all pretty much of our systems are built in this kind of dualistic energy and we're moving towards unity. But in that process, we have to see all of the duality so that it can be shifted. And the average person is kind of trying to tune out from that, but everything is sucking them back into seeing it. And so when we go out into the world as empaths and sensitives, there's this tendency to say, okay, I see all of the suffering in the world. And my job is to take that suffering and transmute it through my body so that I can serve. And I think that there is some truth to that in terms of we're all transmuters to a degree, but the happiest people I know, and when I tune into myself and my own happiness, it's when I can expand my heart space enough to hold both the grief and the sadness of the world and the joy and the contentment and excitement and exuberance of the world. And it's the same thing when you're trying to cultivate happiness as an individual and acceptance of self. I always tell people, if you can have a cre created a football stadium for all of the parts of you and you give them all plenty of space and plenty of acceptance, it's much easier for you to walk through the world in that state of acceptance of self. And I think it's the same when we look at world events, we see all of these terrible things that are happening and they're coming to the surface because they have to be addressed. They have to be supported. We have to move in a new direction. And it's very easy, I think, to go into the fatigue of, oh my gosh, all I ever see are the hard things. We have to cultivate on a very active basis. We have to look very closely for the positive. And it doesn't mean that we bypass the negative. We do both. Right. We look at all of these hard things and then we also cultivate and have a multidimensional understanding that if something hard is happening, that there's some level of growth going on there. And I'm sure everybody uh, listening can relate to their own growth process of when you're trying to birth something in the world or rebirth yourself, that it's often in that moment where the intensity is just so much and so overwhelming and you just want to give up and you surrender completely to the process and you say, universe, just take me because I can't do this anymore, that the energy shifts. And at a collective level, I think that's what we're working with. And at an individual level, we're moving through that cycle over and over and over again, right? Of something coming to the surface that we need to address, that we need to love. And every single time we have an opportunity to shut it back down, to shove it down and repress, or to open our heart further and allow our heart to break open to that next degree so we can continue to cultivate love and compassion for ourselves and for what's happening in the world yeah yeah i i love that what 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 you mentioned uh like opening our hearts and and holding the space for for both because uh yes somehow humans like tend to to connect more to the negative aspects much more easier than the positive and the positive is more uh more difficult so w why this is happening is it like more about the programming or the traumas that we are having or uh maybe is it's something related to DNA or how do you I, see this? I think it's both. I think we are conditioned to try to fix things, you know, and we can look and see that there are so many things that are broken and we can see endless projects. And I think we're going to continue to need to evolve and change and grow. 
but can we enjoy the journey in the moment, right? It's like when you, uh, here in the States, we have Ikea and you get a piece of furniture and you try to put it together. And, you know, can you enjoy the chaotic process of not understanding all of the different pieces and parts? And can you laugh and can you maybe put some music on while you're doing it? And eventually the thing will come together. Maybe it'll be a little wobbly at first, but can you enjoy the process of building it, right? And I think it's the same thing in the collective. We, we tend to want to get the project done. We tend to get to want to get to the other side of it, but we forget that the soul came here. We decided to be here and incarnate and separate from source as an individual because we wanted to know ourselves in all of these different expressions. We wanted to know the pain so that we could experience the joy to a greater degree. And when we negate the journey, the healing journey and the process, and we negate the parts that are healing in that way and just try to get to the other side of it too quickly, we we really negate what we came here for, right? We came here for all of it. And, and you know, it's it's hard when you're in the depth of a process that's incredibly painful to remember that. And so it's important that you have some sort of practice to help you to cultivate that connection, even in those hard times. And you don't lose that practice when things are going well, right? So that you've got that touchstone to come back to, um, to recenter yourself throughout, um, throughout the tumultuous energies that will continue to ebb and flow as we evolve as a species. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I love that. I, I love really uh, like the way you, you, you explain that and how you see uh, you see us like uh, connecting to the, uh, to the collective and supporting ourselves and others because many times like uh, when we hear that we need to be happy first and uh, it feels like we've, we are disconnected from, from other people and that we are not supporting them but the way that you see that we are um, embracing the dualities of, of life um, the positive, the negative, the, the, the light and the uh, um, and the dark it, it it really shows that we can have a fulfilled and happy life but at the same time we we can care for others um so uh yeah and uh and and so, so, something that maybe can be very triggering when it happens in the world when we feel that there are some victims or uh, things that are related to maybe our country and we feel that if we work just on the energetic part, it feels like we are not responsible and we don't do the work we need to do. So how do you how do you see that, uh, and how can we approach those uh, those situations? Yeah, I think it's different for every person. You know, when I look at world events and I look at how people respond and I read the energy of that, I see that that there are different responsibilities or I guess responsibilities might be a big word, but roles that each person plays, you know, some, some people are going to be the villain in the story. Some people are going to be the victim in the story. And then you have all of the observers and the helpers. And there are people who have such a strong reaction to trauma that they don't have the capacity to go in and be a, a ground responder or a protester or something that's like an activist energy. And I do think that there are plenty of people on this planet who are whistleblowers and activists, and that's what they came here to do. And then I think there's another group of people who are incredibly sensitive. And in that sensitivity, they are a lightning rod for compassion. And they can witness something and they can feel the pain of it. And when they feel the pain of it, they are taking some of that energetic density out of the experience. And as they feel that and they allow themselves to feel the pain of it, and then they continue to cultivate compassion for themselves and say, yes, and I need to go make myself breakfast and I need to take care of myself today while this world event is happening. They're showing us what it looks like to be in humanity and continue to come back from challenge. And one of the examples that my guides bring in a lot of times, I, I work with the Dolphin Collective a lot, and they talk to me about when one of their um, pod members is grieving, let's say they lost a child, lost a baby dolphin, um, they're a collective consciousness. And so what happens is they each take a part of that grief so that the mother who has lost the baby can be supported in that grief, but they don't take such a big piece that they themselves can no longer function in their joy. 
And I think we each have different capacities. Some of us have amazing capacity to hold both that density and that light at the same time. And some of other of us have had such incredibly difficult experiences in our lives that just a little bit of that density triggers us to a degree that ungrounds us and takes us out of our power. And so I think if we're comparing ourselves to another person and how they're reacting to a world event, we're getting it wrong. It's about going inward and saying, what is my capacity in this moment? How can I help? How can I help in a way that allows me to stay in my body, to stay safe, safe in my experience and contribute to supporting this and healing? And everything that you do, whether it's just being aware of it and sending love every day or chanting mantra on behalf of an experiencer that's had a trauma, however you support, there is an energetic support because we are all connected and we cannot say that one person is helping more than another. I think it's, it's all equal. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I'll just say also like the, the word will change when we like as the, the people change and, mm -hmm. uh, and also I see because of like uh, the world events that maybe there's some kind of separation because there are different sides and everyone they try so hard to bring other people to, to their sides and if they don't then they feel like they are the enemy and and also we see maybe some some world le leaders using maybe collective traumas to perpetuate the separation and uh, perpetuate some some conflicts that, that are serving them so how how can we maybe how, how do you see that kind of separation and how can we approach a situation when others try to uh to make us pick their side uh when we try to to be neutral and uh and see both sides or different sides from uh the eyes of love yeah i think it's hard because as you said we are conditioned into this dualistic polar energy And, you know, if I look at anything that's happening, there's often this idea of oppressor, oppressed, victim, villain, and, and we've all been both in many lifetimes, right? And so there's this tendency to want to lean into one pol polarity or the other in order to have a full experience of something or to feel righteous in something. And I do believe that, you know, there's, you know... I have different schools of thought of this because when I look at our world leaders, I don't look at everybody as doing this maliciously. I look at them as a product of the conditioning of what's happened on this planet. And so if I'm going to vilify them and, and go out of sight of myself and say that they're the ones who are creating all the problems, what I'm missing is, okay, but what is that duality that they are showing me have to do with me? Where inside of myself am I being my own oppressor? right? Where am I not standing in my power? Where am I not healing my own shadow? And can I cultivate and keep doing my inner work while also paying attention to what's happening on the world stage and being able to main neutral remain in neutrality without detachment? I think sometimes when you're not taking a side, people misunderstand it, right? They assume that you're choosing to not be educated or that you're choosing to um, be detached from it and that Things will never change if you don't get on board with fighting against something, but we've been fighting for centuries. <laughs> and so far we haven't figured out how to change it. And now we're fighting ourselves internally as empaths. We turn that oppressor energy inward. And so if we don't cultivate that loving relationship with ourself and be able to stand in our truth and in our power in that way, when we get met with somebody who wants us to take a side, we can't even articulate our why. And when we can't articulate our why, they assume that we're just detached and, and trying to spiritually bypass, which I think sometimes happens, but I think a lot of times we're just trying to hold the love and the neutrality. So it takes being really connected to self, really connected to truth, and having the capacity to see that that person who wants you to take a side is just acting from a place of fear. And can you meet them in that fear with compassion and see their fear and understand them and listen to them enough so that um, they feel seen and heard, which is what they're asking for. And if you can do that, you don't have to pick a side, right? You're, we we can cultivate that that middle road while also being connected to everybody in in their unique expression yeah absolutely and i i love that that you mentioned 
that we are frozen that without detachment because uh, maybe I heard this maybe a long time ago it, about someone talking about detachment and how it doesn't allow us to to have compassion with others but when we like embody both our divinity and our human aspects we are able to understand why others uh, make others make some kind of choices or feel a certain way and um, we can hold the space for them if if they want to uh, but from a neutral space and from a, yeah a loving space so uh, yeah thank you thank you so much uh, Kati that was very very inspiring and uh, can we take questions from the audience yeah I'd love to all right so everyone uh, if you are on zoom you can raise your hand by pressing uh, reactions then raise hand if you are on the phone you can raise your, your hand by pressing star 9 and also you can type your question on the chat boxes on zoom and youtube um cc she wrote uh this is so helpful just uh, just what i have needed to to hear so powerful to know to know this thank you and uh let's see uh tanya can you please unmute yourself Hello, Tanya. All right. Maybe we'll come back to you later. Um, I think so on the phone. Hello. Can you unmute? Yes. Hi, Mana said it's Sue. Hi, Kathy. Good afternoon. Uh, Kathy, my question is, I know there's a lot of different cosmic energies. Everything is just changing dramatically. My physical body right now, I don't know what, what's going on with it energy-wise, but it's having a very difficult time wanting to stay here on the planet. It keeps. It's like it wants to quit and leave and go home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I appreciate that question because um I personally have been going through a lot of body stuff in the last 3 weeks. Um I can tell you what uh the downloads are that I've been getting about the energies. We are in a stage right now where we've moved from solstice, which was at the end of June on the 21st, and we're preparing okay. to go into Lion's Gate um which begins, you know, depending on your school of thought around the 26th of July through the 8th of August. And in this window, think of it as a great cosmic purge of duality. And so there's kind of a perfect storm happening right now. We downloaded so much light and so much goodness at solstice, and it brought all of the pond scum to the top to be removed. And what I've been witnessing in my own body is that I'm having a really big nervous system reaction. It's been really hard for me to regulate my nervous system and I'm clearing deep survival fears. Think um, lifetimes of being enslaved or oppressed, right? Lifetimes where we haven't made the turn to be able to come together as a collective and there's been a cataclysm. These are the things that we're clearing now. We are not in small potatoes landscape at this point. The end of 2024 is like this cosmic tipping point. As we move into 2025, there's greater unity coming in, but we've got to get through this zone. And sometimes when we're clearing these energies, the brain goes into hyperdrive trying to figure out, okay, well, there must be something wrong with my body. And then mm -hmm. when the brain when the brain kicks into that, then we start going down that mental loop of I must be dying. <laughs> and oftentimes, <laughs> <laughs> oftentimes yeah. part, of us, part of us is dying. We're going through an ego death, right? The ego is getting stirred up because all of these ancestral traumas, these past life traumas, and then the expression of what we're seeing in the collective that is scaring us is activating our ego layer and, and starting to break things down within it, which are little mini ego deaths that we're going through constantly. And, you know, why did we sign up for this, right? We knew we could handle it. And so it's a matter of being in relationship with the body, doing your practice of whatever supports you and feeling good in your body, but doing it with the intention that you're helping your body to cope with the energetic shifts that are taking place. Not that you're trying to fix the body because it's broken, right? It knows exactly what to do to support you. I understand because I've been seeing 
the star beings and and different colors and everything like that. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? But I didn't know if I was like reviewing my past lives or what, but it makes sense now. I'm just into that, the ego thing. Yeah, and the ego is here to protect us, right? A lot of times it gets vilified, but it's here to protect us and keep us safe. So it can be helpful to talk to that part of self and say, thank you so much for trying to keep me safe. But us being in resistance to letting this go is actually keeping me stuck. And we need to find a way to work together to work through this process of healing so that we can come into a greater state of harmony within. Oh, that makes sense. Thank you for your oh, question. Oh, boy. And for a wild ride this week. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not kidding. <laughs> oh, man. This is like, what is wrong with me? Because it's like you feel like you're dying. And it's like, well, if it's my time, it's my time. You know? <laughs> yeah, there is an act of surrender to the process that's needed for sure. <laughs> that's did today I said you know what I'm done with this I surrender it to the universe do what you want <laughs> it sort of makes you feel better <laughs> well thank you very much for that enlightenment at least I'm not the only one who feels like this right now no you're not you're definitely not well thank you very much I much appreciate it and blessings to you and also to you Monaset for taking my call have a great day you too. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Kathy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sometimes just understanding or have, having the awareness of, of what's going on can really shift, shift our state of being. Um, because many times, like we, um, we get identified by the situation or the energy. And uh, maybe sometimes we believe what's, what's happening is, is true. But uh, yeah. So thank you. And also we have uh, Sarah, she wrote, well, that's such a good explanation. Thank you. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, uh, Tanya, can you try again to unmute yourself? Uh, yeah. Sorry, just left for a second and <laughs> not in a good time. So I, um, my question is to connect to people on a deeper level which I will love connecting to people on a deep, uh, deeper level, but not everyone is uh, kind of accepting my deep level. And then I uh, kind of keep sec in secret, like even the words like uh, energy healing and all this stuff, because people look at me like she's strange or crazy. <laughs> so as there is only a few people from my uh, close friends and from my family who understand what I'm talking about and whom I can kind of open my heart and discuss these things. And uh, so I cannot cut off everyone in my life whom I know for ages just because they don't kind of agree with my picture of the world. And um, and to be honest, I actually enjoy the idea of us being co-creators and I think to myself, maybe if we could create better reality and maybe we can, if the more people we kind of gather around us, the better the reality will be one day. So I am thinking of creating a YouTube channel when I will be co-creating with the group of people who will want to connect on my level with me and maybe create something better. So <laughs> my question is, do you think that it is my sole mission or should I do something else? Should I try something else? Because I would like to have my group of people whom I can connect to and be myself. Yeah, beautiful question. Thank you so much, Tanya. Um, so two things that I want to say, I want to spur, first speak to soul mission as a, as a concept. Mm -hmm. And so my belief of soul mission is for us to be our most authentic self possible in each scenario. 
I think everything else is icing on the cake. Our work in the world, all those other things are iterations of that. And so if creating this YouTube channel is going to be a way for you to authentically express and you're creating it in a state of openness of welcoming others who are interested in that while also continuing to be in this place of non-judgment and acceptance of those who may not align, then I think that's a beautiful choice. And, you know, I look at our relationships kind of like, um, uh, I guess, concentric circles, right? And so at our core, we have these core relationships where people are vibing with us and understanding us at a deep level. And then we have other tiers. And sometimes our family or certain friends are in those outer tiers, not because we don't love them, but because that connection is less deep because of the differences that we have. But there's still ways in each and every moment for you to bring your authentic expression into those conversations and into those relationships, even if it doesn't look the same as it is with your core friends that you can just totally be yourself with. And I think that's what we're practicing here on Earth, because we're all different star beings from different planets. That's how we all got here. <laughs> right. That's my belief. And so we're an amalgamation, this tapestry woven together. And so we have to learn to be able to operate in each of these zones of relationship, but still somehow honor our authentic expression and figure out where we feel safe to do that. There's different levels of that. And so if you can create a container with this YouTube site where you feel safe to be your full self, then I think that's only going to support you in developing confidence and doing it in your other relationships as well. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for mm -hmm. your answer. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you, Monsef. Yeah. Thank you, Tanya. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Katie. Um, let's see. Yeah, we will take, we have uh, more questions. Um, just before that, I would love if we can take a few minutes to to talk about the the program, the it's a six parts online course that you are offering. It's uh, the creation consciousness, heaven on earth frequency. And I invite everyone to visit the page, yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash Katie, yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash Katie, K-A-T-I-E. Or you can click on the special offer button, which is on the live event page, later on the replay page. The link also on YouTube video description and the chat boxes on Zoom and uh, YouTube. Um, yeah, so, so Kathy, I would love if you can tell us about this course. Yeah, this is a course that I created uh, not too long ago, and it's a six-part series, and I, I take you all through my view on what creation consciousness is. So we go through the release, the void, the spark, the creation, the birth, and the life. And what I'm in essence doing is bringing through codes and information to teach you to be a creator being again, or help you remember how to be a creator being again. So any of my courses that I have are always about empowering the individual and teaching them how to self heal. Right. So in this one, we work with the entire creation. Oh, there's a storm. Sorry if you heard that <laughs> a lightning bolt, literally, as I said that we work through the entire creation process, um, helping people to um, go get through any blocks that they have. So some people are really good at the ideation, but when it comes to birthing the thing in the world, they shut down because they're afraid to be seen. Some people are really afraid to let go of the past, which means that they don't have any space to create something new. So wherever you have blocks in your creation process, whether that's creating art, um, creating the life that you want for yourself, creating partnership, creating a business, this is a course to help you with that process. And there's activations and teachings that will guide you through each and every step. And by the time you get to the end, you'll clear have cleared within that whole process so that your creations can kind of come to life a bit more easily. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kathy. Uh, for offering uh, this this course to our audience, and uh, yeah, I, I really love like the the different modules and uh, the aspects that that, that they uh, that, that that they are related to. Because how to say, um, like we were talking, it's the 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 shift or the healing journey. It's it's a process that we are going through, and there are different aspects related to that. But when we have this um, a system that can guide us through that. Uh, because many times we are not aware of uh, some aspects that that we need to to touch on, and when we have a system like that that can support us, it can be very um, very beneficial, very very helpful for us to become aware of our true power, uh, 
and how we can tap into the the, the creation consciousness and bring that in into into um into our physical life as as humans so thank you thank you so much for uh yeah sharing your course your gifts with our audience here and everyone um yeah i will invite you to sign up to this uh, six part course on the link your divine uniqueness.com forward slash katy your divine uniqueness.com forward slash katy k-a-t-i-e or you can click on the special offer button which is on the live event page later on the replay page the link also on youtube video description and uh, on the chat boxes on zoom and youtube um beautiful and yeah we have um a feedback from ellen i am also in these in these persian states and surfing in my nervous system and staying compassionate with these reactions thank you Cathy. and um, a question from linda i have been set free from years of abuse and finally have things in my life such as time for myself freedom to just be me and even simple things like quietness instead of feeling so happy and at peace i can feel so sad and unworthy and stagnation it makes no sense i've waited for so long to get to this place uh, to this place um, even buying material things i don't use them even though i have waited for so long how can i overcome this uh, crippling crazy thing that is happening thank you so much yeah, I I often talk with people about the grief that comes from every ending, even when it's an ending that we've looked forward to our whole life. And that every ending is going to bring that grief forward and what the grief allows us to do. And I cover this in my course in the very first class because people don't know how to grieve and let go of the past and then they can't create the next thing. But when we allow that grief to be present, even though we think we should be celebrating, you may be grieving the lifetimes where you've been running this pattern of disempowerment and victimization that's happened to you, this abuse that's happened. And it may not make any sense to anybody outside of you or even to yourself that you should still be grieving. But what I would say is, can you bring that part of you forward that is not ready to move forward, that thought that that was all that she deserved? And and hold her closer in sacredness and love love that part of self and honor her grief. And in doing so, when we honor grief, you know, in ancient cultures, when people were in grief, they would gather around them uh, because they believed that they were a portal to the divine in those moments. And so when we honor our grief, we become a portal to the divine and we are able to allow the things that we've been holding on that might still be living in our body, even though our physical experience has changed to begin to unwind and our nervous system to reset so that then we can be in that place of receptivity. Because oftentimes when we are in that place of healing, we we bypass that very last stage of grief and its completeness. And, and that keeps us from being able to claim and enjoy the things that we, we know on some level we're worthy of, but we're needing to move beyond those programs that were conditioned into us in those abusive situations. And I work with so many people who have been um, victims of abuse in different forms, and it really messes with the mental body and it creates so many repeating loops and stories of shame and guilt and unworthiness that have to be honored and unwound from in order to actually be able to live in contentment. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I agree with you, like the, the release is very important. And uh, also because like we've been, for example, if we've been for a long time in some kind of challenge or situation, uh, then this is the only thing that we know, like, creating a new thing a new momentum feels very um very right. unknown and maybe we don't know how to to handle that so um yeah what, what you said is is yeah is really helpful so thank you thank and you so i much. also add one suggestion yeah. that has worked for me in the past in those zones is to create something that i make with my hands and or create art or sing or dance something where I'm using that creation energy without any attachment to what it looks like, or if, if I'm actually, you know, anybody else can enjoy it and get out of the external, but go into the internal creation in that and, and allow those feelings to kind of come through in that. Um, yeah. And we have a comment from Antelichi without our, our grief, 
how could we know as much about love? Yeah. Uh, Linda Sheard, uh, thank you so much. This, re this resonated so much and uh, felt so right. Mm -hmm. uh, much gratitude. Thank you. And uh, let's see, Ellen, can you please unmute yourself? Hello, hello, Katie. Hello, Monseth. Hello. Can you understand me? Yeah. Uh, I've, although I've already written something about in the comments about my state, I'm so glad I um, tuned in and uh, I had a very big epiphany uh, about I consider myself as, a, of course, as a light worker, but I had something. I've just felt you were saying, you know, everybody has his place and everybody does does his his part. And I feel I'm pressuring myself very, very much. And and I could feel as you were saying that that is really from my mental, it was just falling down and and uh, you know a word like oh, I'm that's grandiosity you know I, I think I'm the big helper you know but I'm not I'm just <laughs> I'm doing what I'm doing but this is so helpful you know to to really um and and for me this is what is happening here uh, people listening so that I can realize in relationship you know it's not what is my in my head uh, but what is um yeah uh what others are doing and uh yeah and i don't know whether you can step into my field and and uh, find out something about a next step or um uh, yeah staying there where i am because it's, i'm very lonely actually and a loneliness that comes from not expressing myself. Yeah, what I see when you speak about that is um, I saw all, and this is something I was working with in meditation myself last night, because in August, my healing circle is going to be about the courageously open heart, which is de-armoring ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so a light worker, you know, isn't just a light warrior. Mm. Right. A light worker is also someone who is cultivating that inward light and that joyful expression in every moment and going out into the world in that light and letting people see what that looks like. Mm. And and I think as as empaths and sensitives, we tend to um, hermit a little bit or hide. And, and we've had, you know, the pandemic was great at giving us permission to to hermit. <laughs> and hide and so we're we're getting back out into the world and being seen and then things get triggered right or we get rejected and the opportunity is in those moments where our light isn't accepted or understood is to instead of that becoming another layer of armor in our heart field to let it break open our hearts further mm -hmm. so that more of that light can shine out in the world so I kind of see this image of you putting all that armor down, right? And coming into a greater degree of lightness where you're letting go of the responsibility that you have had with that word and maybe coming into a new relationship with being the light that you are, mm -hmm. right? And and not coming from this place of I must do it and I must be perfect and I must do it in these ways in order to serve, um, giving yourself greater permission to just just be, Right, mm -hmm. which we are human beings, not human doings first. So that practice is a radical act of self love that can change the world in and of itself. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. It's helpful. <laughs> thank you, Ellen. Much love. And uh, also th thank you, Kathy, for the guidance. Um, yeah, we have a question from Tina. It's a uh, long one. I will try to summarize it. Um, like recently her 22 year, 22 years old daughter, she will be having a baby, but she chosen to, um, to make uh, Tina, her mother, like, uh, to move, remove her from, from her life. And Tina feels that as very uh, painful. And she's asking how to, to, how do I get out of this pain? And she mentioned the unworthiness of love uh, was a key um, 
was the key wound in her journey of 60 years. Um, so, uh, yeah, so how can, how can she handle the, that pain? That's the question. So what I see in that question energetically is um, the soul contract that you have with your daughter, Tina, and it's a difficult one. It's one where your daughter has agreed to come in and be a part of this rejection and abandonment energy wound that you're clearing in this lifetime that you have internalized to a degree that has now become a story of unworthiness within your being. And the first thing is to validate that this is incredibly hard, that this is something that no parent ever wants to experience with their child. And anytime someone makes a decision to cut someone off in life, I, I witness that there's a part of them that is trying desperately to hold on to something that feels like safety to them. And for some reason, that person represents a lack of safety. And for right, wrong, or indifferent, that's where your daughter is at at this point. And I don't think you're going to be able to get to the place of accepting her choice until you allow yourself to feel the totality of the pain that it's caused you, which is probably also a relationship to the pain of all the other times someone has perpetrated a, an energy like this in your field and in your experience. And after that, after you've allowed yourself to fully feel that pain, and, and we don't know how long that's going to take for you to experience this, um, you can then get to a place, and this is where you will know that you've come out the other side of this pattern. That person will come up in your meditation or in your healing process, and you'll be ready to say to that person, thank you for being the end of this pattern. Thank you for being the last soul on this energetic train of this pattern of rejection and abandonment. And I appreciate that you had that as your soul contract with me. Thank you for being the end of this pattern. I release it completely and I am done with this energy. And you have the opportunity to do that with this experience, or you could wait until the next experience, but it doesn't change the outcome in the end, which is choosing that you are complete with this energy and that you have learned all that you can from this lesson. Right? It's it's when people come to me and there's anything in their life that they want to let go of or they want to move beyond. Um, I always tell them, OK, but you are where you are right now. And there's a lesson here that needs to be completed. Allow this experience that exists in your life that you already know to be the end of it. Let it work itself all the way out in this experience so you never have to go through it again. And so that's the invitation here. And it's not an easy one. Uh, this feels like a hard road for you. And I appreciate your question. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kathy. And uh, thank you, Tina. Sending you much love. Um, and yeah, maybe uh, I have a question before we can please the call. If, uh, yeah, because we talked about the, the collective uh, wounding and how can we handle both the, like embrace the positive and the, and the negative. Um, and my question now is like from that state of being, how can we create the new path or the new timeline or maybe the expansion that we want and uh, the life that we want to create? So I'd love uh, like a message about that. Yeah, I love that, Monsef. Um, I need to give the energies a moment because the creator beings, they're my 12th dimensional guides are coming in with this question. And, and so uh, in my New Earth Now school, I teach all about... Um, you know, what it means to to claim our new earth now in the midst of the chaos that's happening. And my belief is that as each of us individually do the work to um, kind of unify the polarity in our own beings, do our shadow work, do our integration work, be with all of those parts and love them all unconditionally, that's what actually activates our ability to step into the new earth vibration that's already here. You know, Mother Earth and our animals and so many natural world things around us are already vibrating at that frequency, but we miss out on being able to be in that because we're in these states of duality and it takes us out of presence. So one of the best ways, I think, to cultivate that unity consciousness, besides doing our inner work and loving on compassionately all those parts, is to get out into the natural world and connect with Mother Earth and her beauty and connect with the frequencies that she brings in that are saying, hey, heaven on earth is already here. 
all these things around us are going to continue to fall and, and shift and change, but we individually have to claim it. And as we start to claim it and live it, other people see it and they go, wow, that's interesting. I'd like to do that too. And it's a ground up build, right? This is not a top down approach. This is an inside job from the ground up. And so I think every day cultivating that connection to self to source and to the earth as a practice, whatever that looks like. It could be art, it could be dance, it could be singing mantra, it could be meditation, whatever connects you in that way to that center column of energy is is what cultivates that frequency so that we can claim that new beginning for each and every one of us. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Kathy. Um, yeah, th thank you for, for everything you shared. That was very, very inspiring call. Uh, I really love this, not everything you shared with us. Um, and also we, we had like really great comments from our audience. So about that. And uh, yeah, also thank you for, for the, the course that you are offering to our audience. And uh, yeah, great work for you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so and, much. Beth. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, beautiful. And uh, also everyone, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for, uh, for cooperating with us. Uh, whether on the live call or on the replay. Thank you for those who ask their questions and for the, the comments and feedback. And uh, CC, Shirat, thank you so much for all the information and explanations. Tanya, thank you. And uh, yeah, so again, I really invite you to sign up for the, the, the course that Cathy uh, is offering to us. And it is Creation Consciousness, Heaven on Earth Frequency. It's a six part online course. And uh, the link is yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash Katy. Yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash Katy. K A T I E. Or you can click on the special offer button, which is on the live event page and uh, later also on the replay page. And the link also on YouTube video description and the chat boxes on Zoom and on YouTube. And uh, yeah, so, so that's everyone. I'm sending you so much love and then we see you on the next call. Bye bye, everyone.